Hi friends, Nick here from Technology Lowdown. Today we're looking at rsync, which is a uh, tool that's built into Linux that if you've come from Windows is a bit like Robocopy that enables you to back up all your files to either a local or external source through the network. With rsync you can also copy between say a USB drive on one remote Linux computer and then copy that to another one on your local network. You can even do it over WANs if you have a VPN as well set up for that as well. But what I'm going to show you today is a script that I use for this and how to get this one set up using SSH and uh, getting a certificate set up on your remote server that you're copying data from and how to uh, make sure that your script is set up correctly. The script I use, it's not very big, it's probably about 10 lines in total, but I can insert extra additional folds that I need to back up and it will add those to the queue. And the good thing with rsync is the next time it runs it, it'll just update all the change files. It won't bother um, uh, copying everything across when it doesn't need to. Just a note, if you're looking at the script that I'm going to be showing you today, I have included in there a feature to remove the um, permissions of the files because when I'm backing up, I'm quite happy not to copy the permissions which the files have at the source. This is because I just want to make sure that I can access every file externally. Um, if I did need to recover from a disaster, I'm not really fussed on the security of these files. However, by default, rsync does copy those security permissions that you normally would see, such as user groups and um, ownership and uh, those types of uh, metadata. So let's get into it and I'll show you a little bit about this rsync script that I've got. So the rsync command synchronizes files from a source to destination on a local machine or over a secure network connection. It's fast, flexible, secure, and and a replacement for RCP. So this is um, the first thing that we need to do is set up terminal so that we can connect to our remote Linux computer uh, without having to enter a username and password. Now in my network here I've got a Synology NAS so uh, once you've got root enabled on your Synology NAS you can do some googling and find out how to do this um, I'm going to connect to it, but you could easily be connecting to say like a Pi using this method if you've got a Raspberry Pi or you could uh, be connecting to another Linux machine of your choice. As long as the remote system has Linux on it, then you will be fine to follow this method. Okay, so I'm going to connect with the root account for the Synology NAS. Now, I'm already in. I didn't have to enter username and password there because I've already set this one up at an earlier date. But basically, I've got this um, page here from the Geek Stuff. And the process is on our local machine. We need to... Uh, I'll just exit from this remote connection here. You need to generate a keygen. I'll start off the process. It's pretty simple. You can basically just click Enter enter, um, but I'm not going to overwrite, so I'm going to click no, you would just uh, continue to the next step, which is enter the same passphrase again, okay, um, in fact, you just leave that one empty, so once you've got that, then you've got your key generated inside this uh, ID RSA pub file, the next step here is we need to go SSH and then copy ID to the uh, remote server, so this is, um, going to be using uh, the ID RSA file that we just generated in the previous step and then you'll put in your remote host um, IP okay so I'm not going to do that one now but what that should do is is then prompt you uh, to enter in the details of that remote connection alright so what we should be able to do now is I can just connect to the machine and now I'm already logged in as root I have uh, console access to it and I didn't have to enter a username and password so that's pretty easy and now what that command does that copy ID RSA that is just simply copying the uh, key that your computer generated to this file called authorized keys on the remote machine so that this remote machine recognizes the key that your Linux machine has generated in order to be able to access that remote connection I'm not going to go into that file because that key is in uh, basically a private key and it shouldn't really be visible. All right, so once you're set up and you don't need to log in using your username and password, then you're good to go the next step in terms of setting up rsync. Okay, so this is the rsync um, 
script that I've got going here. We've got uh, a couple of lines here at the top, which is specifying the backup path. So this is the remote server that I'm connecting to, and then uh, the volume, which it is mounted to. So where that one is, is if I connect back to this remote one here, I'll go ls, oh, hang on. Uh, I'll go cd to the top directory. And if I go ls, we should be able to see volume one, and volume one, if I cd into that one, whoop, volume one, is basically where all the shared folders are created within the Synology NAS system. Um, the next line of this script is the backup item. So these are the folders which I'm wishing to back up. So we've got a couple in here. I've got uh, just some folders which I've used previously for business. And then I've got DIR destination. This is where it is copying to. So this is on your local machine. I'll just exit this, exit that. Oop, go back to terminal too many times. Uh, CD to the top, and if I CD into media, and then, yeah, then we should be able to see that I've got an external USB drive connected under this name here, SA01, SA02, uh, which is also showing up here. Uh, if you're using Pop! OS like I am, you can just click Control L here, and that will show you your mount location for your um, external drive. So that location goes into here and then you put in the folder that you're copying it to which in this case is SA01. Just ignore this hyphen mobile because I've got this script set up for a couple of different drives and this is when I was modifying it for the second drive. The drive I've got plugged in at the moment uses this path. All right, so this next bit, params. This one is the par parameters that your um, computer is going to be using with the rsync command. So avh um, and stats. Stats includes the stats in your log. Um, then we've got all these exclude options here for what I'm excluding. I'm not going to be backing up my WIMS or ISOs and MRIMGs. Basically, I'm just looking to back up you know, pictures, files, and that sort of goss. I'm not uh, looking to back up anything else. So I'll just minimize that one and I'll explain a little bit about this command. This is explain shell. It's a um, uh, quite a useful website I came across just today. And it explains this command from the beginning. So we've got rsync, it's fast, reliable remote connection. A stands for archive, verbose mode. This increases the amount of information given during the transfer, which is good for logging purposes. H makes it human readable. Uh, and then stats will include uh, the stats on the transfer at the end of the log within your log file and it will also display it on the screen. Delete before, this one deletes files from the destination that are no longer needed first. Um, I'm not sure why I include this but I've just done it for a number of years and it seems to work for me. Change mod is something I've added in on this occasion because I found when I ran rsync without change mod and I went to plug it into a different Linux computer, the backup drive, I couldn't access the files on there. So rather than having to fight with security permissions, I thought I might add in change mod and uh, set my settings. So I'll show you how that one works. So I'll go back to Visual Studio Code here, and we can see that I've got change mod, user group, and it's read write x. User group owner read write x, okay? Um, so that's what I've got there, and delete before. So this uh, next section here, lines 25 to 30, this one is where we set the folders that we want to back up. So I've got my source set, my destination, a timestamp. Um, I've got this one set for all these ones. Not sure why I've done that. I could have probably just had one instance of that, but uh, for the moment I've got uh, that declared multiple times. You do only need one of those, but uh, I must have been thinking something at the time when I was uh, doing the script. The log file location, this is where you're saving those logs to. So where I save my logs to is on the external drive. I've got a folder called logs. And then in there, I've got all the logs of the files which have been backed up. And what I've done is I've separated so that SA01, that's one of my NASs. That has all the files in there. And then SA02 is another NAS. So if we go into the logs folder, I've got a folder here for SA01. And then this one here is SA02. All right, so that is how that works. 
And then this finally here is the rsync command. We've got the log file. It's uh, specifying that. that. The reason we need to declare this log file several times is because it is uh, changing the name of the file each time with the folder that's being backed up. And I got the source, I got the destination, and then the parameters is basically just declaring that it needs to read all of these array parameters here from the params variable. So once you've got your script modified and you're happy with it, then you need to copy that one to your external drive and we need to set it so it is executable. So to do this, we need to open up our um, file manager. I would copy this script here to the drive which I'm storing my backups on. So there it is, backup script example. I'm then, then going to go to terminal and I'll go back to this file explorer, uh, to this file manager window. I'll copy that path. It was control L to bring up that menu. And then I'll just make sure I'm definitely in that directory, which I am, of course. And so there's the file there, backup script example.sh. So what we need to do is go change mod plus x for backup script example.sh. And that would have changed the um, permissions on that uh, file. Now we can simply go backup script example.sh. And if I press enter that would then run that script at the moment i won't run that one because that is a modified version but i'll just go back up say and i'll run this script here and what this is doing is it's querying the remote server at the moment working out what files have changed and because this is quite a large um amount of files this will uh, process for about 10 minutes I find for my files and then it will start the actual sync process so guys I hope that video was helpful to you in learning how you can use the rsync command to uh, back up your files if you would like this script please refer to the description of this video and you can get access to the links that I used in uh, getting this set up and you'll have access to my script in a paste bin or a source that I find to be able to share that one with you. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please like it and give it the thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe and uh, communicate in the comments if you'd like to send me a message and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.